Hello, welcome to the um, second video in our chapter six video series. This one shouldn't be quite as long as the first one. Um, all we have to do is kind of go through and name the body movements, and then we'll talk about how muscles are named, which will be very helpful for when you are learning uh, your muscles via the muscle list. Um, all right, so let's get started. So first of all, um, you have these are all listed, all these movements are listed in your notes right here. And you'll notice a lot of times these movements are opposite or antagonistic of each other. So the way that our muscles are organized around our body is they usually are in um, pairs and opposite moving pairs. So the first set of movements are called flexion and extension. I'm going to scooch back a little bit so you can see a little bit more of my body. So when I'm talking about flexion, flexion is defined by reducing the angle between two body parts. So if I'm gonna use my elbow as an example, if I'm in anatomical position, right, anatomical position, if I bend my arm forward into this frontal space, this frontal plane, this is flexion, okay? So I'm bending it, I'm decreasing the angle between my arm and my forearm, flexion. The opposite movement to that is extension. If I'm gonna increase the angle between my two body parts, right? So my upper arm and my lower arm. So this is flexion, this is extension. Always in anatomical position, right? So that's a really easy one, flexion and extension. We can do that at our shoulder. We can go flexion, extension. And what they're showing here, she's not in anatomical position. She's showing flexion and extension, which is accurate as well. But we don't really see that movement quite as often as flexion, extension. Flexion, extension. See if I can do my wrist. I'll do the side. Okay. Flexion, extension. Flexion, extension. Okay. I do my legs, but they're a little bit harder to see. I guess. Flexion at the hip, extension at the hip. All right. We also have, if you go past anatomical position, we have what's called hyperextension. So on the shoulder, we can do flexion, extension, and hyperextension. So some joints, are there's not a problem with that. So like on the wrist, again, anatomical position, but I'm just kind of squished up here. So flexion, extension, hyperextension. But your elbow can't do that normally. So flexion, extension, I can't. Bend, I have to break my elbow to do hyperextension, and that could lead to some injuries. So some body parts you can do flexion, extension, and hyperextension. Some body parts you can't. Okay? So flexion is narrowing of the angle. Extension is increasing the angle. We can see that in the head as well. We can do flexion, extension, hyperextension. Okay? Um, we can also do some rotational movements um, in different parts of our body. So we can rotate around uh, our head. So these are rotational movements. You can just call them right rotation or left rotation or lateral rotation. We can do rotation at the arm. And like they can, you can do rotation at the hip. So you keep your whole leg straight, you just rotate at the hip. Um, the next body movement pair that we're going to take a look at is mainly just your limbs. Okay, it's mostly with your limbs, but we could do flexion and extension with our, on our axis. This next movement is moving kind of into that um, frontal plane or the sideways plane. So again, if we're in anatomical position, right, and I'm moving my arm away from my body, right, the midline, this is called abduction, A-B-duction, because we're abducting it. I think we're kidnapping it away from our body. And then when we move it back, that's called adduction, A-D-D, -D, like we're adding it back to our midline. So at my shoulder, I can do abduction and adduction. I cannot do that action at my elbow. I can only do flexion and extension here. That's that monaxial joint we saw back in chapter five. I cannot make my elbow go adduction and abduction, but I can with my wrist, adduction, or sorry, abduction, adduction. I can with my fingers, right? I can move those in that plane. I can do that with my leg, abduction, adduction. But we can't really do that along our spine because there's nothing to take away from our spine. So it's mainly your limbs. Um, circumduction 
is like pretending you're drawing a big circle, like an imaginary circle in the sky with your, so this would be circumduction at my wrist or my shoulder. I can do circumduction at my wrist and I can do circumduction at my joint right here, the carpal metacarpal, no, the metacarpal phalangeal joint right here. So circumduction, circumduction, circumduction at three different joints. Um, the next pair that's shown here is just found at the foot. So I'm going to pretend this is my foot. So it'd be really hard to bring my foot all the way up here. So dorsiflexion, if this is my heel and these are my toes, dorsiflexion is you dig your heel, okay, and plantar flexion is you're pointing your toes. So that's how I always remember D for digging your heel, P for pointing your toes, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. Okay. We have another pair of the, at the foot, okay, so if this is my inner surface of my foot, so medial surface, like my big toe would be like where my thumb is, okay. Inversion is you're going to be pointing the bottom of your foot towards the inner, like your line of uh, middle, midline. Eversion is pointing it out, okay, it's kind of this. And then we have a very special relationship in our forearm with our um, ulna and radius. So the radius is on your thumb side. I always remember it because it's the rad radius. And ulna, ulna is underneath, right? So an anatomical position, ulna is gonna be here. So we have the ability, so hard to do at home, so much easier to do in a lecture hall. Um, but if we are going to do what's called pronation, we are not moving our shoulder joint, we are not moving our wrist, and we're not flexing, this is, a pivot joint. So we do pronation, supination. What's happening is your radius is crossing over the ulna. You can mimic this in the skeletons in lab if you wanted to. Just gently, you can twist the wrist and you can see the crossing over of the radius and the ulna. All right, the next one we have is dealing with the thumb only. So we have flexion, extension flexion, extension, flexion, extension. We can do abduction and adduction, but when we use the thumb to kind of touch our fingertips, this is called opposition. Opposable thumbs, if you've ever heard that term before. So opposition and opposable thumbs, all right? So you might be thinking, well, why do we have to learn all these things? Well, that's just part of the curriculum, but also when you are learning your muscle list, you're gonna be asked for the actions. Like what are, what does the what bicep do? So if you're saying, okay, so I'm gonna learn, this is my bicep, so this is its location. The insertion point is on the radial tuberosity of your um, radius. And then it's also connected up here to your scapula and clavicle, okay? So those are the connection points. And then when this muscle contracts, what does it do to the arm? Well, we've just learned that flexion at the elbow. So that's all you need to know for the action is what it's, it's listed in your um, in your muscle list. Or we have our pectoralis major muscles, these big guys right here, they're, they're connecting to our sternum origin, inserting onto the greater and lesser tubercles in the intertubercular groove of your humerus. So if that muscle contracts, oh, hey, look, we're flexing at the shoulder. Or your deltoid is this big muscle here that kind of originates here, inserts on the delta, deltoid tuberosity on your humerus. When that muscle contracts, what does it do? Abduction at the shoulder. So learning these words of the body movements is basically helping you learn your muscle list. So use these terms interchangeably with what you're doing in lab to make things um, go a little bit easier. And then all of the origins and insertions are going to be things that you're going to pull back from your bone list um, that you worked on before. So some of those markings, those tuberosities and tubercles and margins and lines and stuff, those are the points of muscle attachment. So we're kind of reinforcing and bringing back some of the boneless stuff and using this body movements to help you fulfill kind of all of those three parts of your muscle list. All right. So then this last slide, um, I'm not asking students to memorize all of these terms. This is more of like a reference or kind of just um, gives you new reasons why muscles are named the way they are. Like, why do I have to learn the um, latissimus dorsi or the quad, um, let's see, I'm trying to list, rectus femoris um, or things like that. So um, a lot of times muscles are named based on their shape. And so this is just one of the pictures to kind of illustrate that. So 
I haven't looked at your guys' muscle list in a while. I have my 200 level muscle list in my brain. So I'm going to try to pick the ones that I, I think are going to be on the 121 muscle list. Um, but I think you have your orbicularis oculi and your orbicularis oris. Orbit, right? Orbicularis means like circular. Um, we have our um, sartorius, where all the muscle fibers run parallel. That's the one that kind of crosses your big thigh muscles. We have deltoid, right? So this is um, your multipennate is just the, the way the fibers are going. But we can also see, so I'm just going to look in the notes here. That's the direction of the muscle fibers. We can also take a look at the names based on their size. So we have gluteus maximus and gluteus medius. Those are going to be two sizes of muscles that are all found on the back side there. Um, we have location of the muscle. Um, zygomaticus is on coming off of your zygomatic bone. We have biceps brachii. This is your brachium, right? So we, we learned that way back in the very first week of the term. So knowing those anatomical positions can be very helpful. Um, rectus femoris, it's, it's your part of your quadriceps on the front. So that's gonna be your femur area, femoris. So a lot of muscles are named based on the location of where they are at in your body. Some of them are named by their, um, how many origins they have. So bicep has two, tricep has three, quadricep has four, it's actually made up of four different muscles, your rectus femoris and your three vastus muscles. Um, sometimes muscles are named for where their attachments are. So I think you guys have sternocleidomastoid, which is this big one right, like right here in your neck. So it connects to the sternum, the clavicle, that's a sternocleido part. And then it's a muscle that comes up and connects to that mastoid process, which I think should be one of your markings on your temporal bone. So sternocleidomastoid tells you exactly where that muscle is. And then once you find that muscle, you know the origins and the insertion, and then you're going to contract that muscle and you can say, oh, the action is lateral flexion. So a lot of times just listening and paying attention to the names of the muscles gives you huge clues as to what they're doing. Um, or the action. I think your wrists, your R4 muscles, you guys are just learning flexors and extenders. Yeah, so take a look. If these muscles are contracting, those are flexing my wrist. If these muscles are contracting, they're extending my wrist. So these are called your flexors and these are your extenders. You have your big adductors on the inner thigh. So they're gonna be pulling your legs towards the midline. Your adductor, um, I don't know if you have to know the magnus, the longus and the brevis or just adductors. So those are also clues. So the names and the muscles give you clues as to where they are, what they do, what they're connected with, or maybe what their shapes are. Like deltoid is like a big triangle. All right, um, that's it. So that wraps up our chapter six stuff. So again, if you are struggling in any part of the class, please reach out to either Wade or I, and we'd be happy to help. I will see you next time. Bye.